Hey, thanks for joining. It's John Jay here, and I'm talking about, I guess, is let's call it part three, uh, when I was explaining what to, how to respond to a debt collector in court. And the debt collector happens to be, in my examples here, is LVNV. It's a third-party debt collector that typically acquires uh, credit card debt uh, or other receivables, mostly credit card, consumer credit card. So LVNV, I, I did a video on two different videos on two different cases where uh, we did a motion to dismiss uh, in one case. And then in another case, it was a different, a differently written motion to dismiss because of the way that particular case was. And I don't, I'm not talking about that one. This one is that shorter version of the motion to dismiss. This one was in uh, Pennsylvania. And as you can see here, um, so what happened was we filed that motion to dismiss. It's in the previous video, as I said, and uh, it turned out to where the, the court wanted to have a uh, hearing. So uh, I, I, I told my client, go ahead and go to the hearing and just basically reiterate what's in the motion. And so more or less, he did that. And basically, to summarize what he did in the hearing is when the judge called the case, he went up there and identified himself as the defendant. And the uh, LVNV's attorney was was there. Now, what he explained to me is that she wasn't prepared and didn't understand what was going on. She didn't even know a lot of the elements of the proceeding. I mean, she was she never had apparently read the case. Didn't even know there was, you know, what was filed probably. So, anyways, uh, the argument was that how can I answered this complaint when the complaint really doesn't identify a credit agreement. It doesn't identify or allege that LVNV was the assignee or it doesn't establish the manner in which it became the assignee. Or there's no assignment agreement. Uh, you know, there are no, there's no, nothing of substance here that would allow me to answer the complaint. And so that's what I had my client tell the judge. Okay, very simple. And so the judge says, yeah, it doesn't look like, yeah, there's anything here. And the attorney was fumbling, he said, was fumbling through papers and didn't even know how to respond. So, I mean, that helps. But I think if you have a judge that's going to have, you know, uh, want to do the right thing, you're going to get this result. And as you can see here, the, the court found in favor of uh, the defendant. So he dismissed the case. He granted the motion to dismiss. And then he just, you know, gave down here, you'll see... Uh, he gave his the appeal rights in the comment section, but basically the order of the court is, and here's the judge's name here, Judge Milan, uh, was November 7th, and the judgment was for the uh, for the defendant, okay, dismissing the case. So it's pretty simple. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've done tens of thousands of these, and maybe I've got a handful of cases just like this where we win. And in this case, the judge didn't tell the plaintiff to refile uh, or amend the pleading. He just dismissed it, and I'm... They're probably not going to. They're probably not going to amend it, or they're not going to appeal it. This is a nine thousand dollar case. They were going to get a judgment against him for nine thousand dollars, so I think it's worth it. There. Remember, at the same time, we like to win these, but the success is not based on winning these things in court. It's based on making yourself uncollectible and then understanding how to use the credit system so that you can get those benefits. But um, what, this is just nice to talk about to show that if you have a judge that's going to make a rational decision you should expect this. And I would think that out of all the thousands of cases I took, that I would have thousands of cases just like this. But no, that's not that's not what happened. But here's one that I just like to say, okay, here's an example. <laughs> you know, we got those results and you can too. But if you ask me about these cases, what I recommend is we we uh, fight the case a bit in court and, and see how that how that goes. But don't base everything that you're going to do on what happens. This is not your solution. Your solution is to make yourself uncollectible and also learn how to use money, learn how to allocate your savings, learn how to allocate and make investments, learn what is to be done with your money and not just take what you're given all the time. Like here, sign up for this IRA account, sign up for this 401k. You know, that's what we really want to uh, focus on. So this is the education that I want to give people. What you're seeing here is the fact that we won this case. Okay, fine. And it's going to be permanent. He's never going to have to pay him. And he can easily take it off his credit and all these things, fine. But there's more learning that should go with this, okay? Learning how not to get in this situation again and how to use other people's money in a productive way, not just like, you know, any consumer that's waiting in line at like a, a Disney World type situation. You want to be intelligent. You want to be, you know, uh, proactive and, and, and uh, use your money wisely, all right? 
So anyways, hope you enjoy that. Hope it uh, answers some of your questions and is a bit uh, encouraging. Thank you.